Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Before we get started, please take the time to subscribe, then click on the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. Hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is episode 123. I want to thank you very much for coming to visit us. Uh, lots of wonderful feedback lately. We appreciate it. Very constructive feedback. That's the kind of stuff we love. Whether you're pro or con on anything we talked about, um, I find it fascinating. I actually, you know, I've been kind of going after some of the nomad antics going on and I've actually had nomadics, especially ones that have been out there, we'll call them veterans, giving me feedback going that we're absolutely right on them, right on the money. And, uh, the new mat nomads are the ones that are kind of actually, um, messing things up out there, but, but that's not totally what I'm going to talk about today. Today, um, through observations of my own <laughs> and influenced by many great video uh, channels and not so great, uh, is this obsession, this RV obsession, which I think is going to be the death of us, I think, or is the root cause of some of the problems we're having out there in the RV world is to get things for free. And... I hear to claim that nothing is really free. <laughs> it's just, is it? it? It's like you can't start a business for free. You can't live someplace for free. And you can't RV for free. And you can't stay at some place for free, really. There's either a catch, there's rules, or, uh, and in some cases, uh, like uh, last video I watched Dan and Jen again talking about etiquette about people boondocking basically, and they called it something else, but uh, uh, I don't know where they got that terminology. But uh, where you stay somewhere like a casino or Walmart's for free, you don't really stay for free, and you should have etiquette. They say, and I agree. Uh, to be a patron at either that store or at that casino, use one of the restaurants if you don't like to gamble um, as a courtesy. And and if there isn't one of those two things that you can enjoy or you don't have the money to do it, to go in and thank the, the uh, as a patron or thank them as um, for having that service for you and let them know you took good care of the area and and uh, how, why it's so important to you and what the good things and pass it on to them and make them feel good about letting you use their parking spot to sleep over in. So, uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, yeah, let's talk about free. Well, you know, if I had my way, <laughs> of course, I think I'd rather use the word low cost as opposed to free as far as the obsession for RVers. So uh, my fear is the, the, the this obsession of trying to find free is going to get you in trouble. Uh, it just seems like almost every circumstance, think about it, uh, people have had issues or safety issues also tie into situations of staying at places for free. Um, just saying, um, typically your public lands are free, uh, or there's a, uh, nothing's free. It's just not it. However, the passion for looking for good deals, coupons, and low cost, like staying at an RV park that might charge you $15 a night or something like that. That's a bargain. Um, uh, I think to me, it just sounds like when a business says, I'll give you low cost, which means that that kind of justifies them to send their security patrols out to the parking lot. For example, what I'm thinking of is like, for example, um, uh, 
uh, Quinault Indian Reservation over uh, in Washington where Nomadic Fanatic found out the place that we used to boondock there, which is a big hunk of land along the coast that's tied into the casino, used to be free, but now they charge. But even when it was free, it was kind of nice they'd send their security car through there now. But really, I mean, why? what was their incentive to do that if there was no income really coming in other than hoping that those people would you know, come into the casino and use their resources? Um, so by charging, it justifies the manpower, the resources that they spend to send security out and, and police the area a little bit just for your safety. Which, you know, it's really dark and there's really no lights. It was, uh, um, I could certainly see the common sense. And two, when you pay for something a little bit, uh, you tend to take a little better care of it. Of course, the other ones, people will say, well, I paid for it. I'll treat it the way I want. So that's the downside of that, too. But, uh, you know, everything costs money. I don't know, you know, staying on our lands for free and if people don't take care of it we got to have people maintain our public lands and pick up after the ones that don't take care of it and stuff and that costs money and so they either shut it off or they charge us a little fee and uh i think i'd rather have just a little fee so i think if i was gonna do a if i was able to change the banner of this show i'd love to see RVing at low cost would be a nicer uh, jingle for all of us to use instead of trying to send people out to finding these free places, which in a sense, uh, well, if anything, because of people doing all this boondocking and free stuff, at least we're getting some very interesting stories, <laughs> but someone's going to get hurt. Seriously, someone's going to get hurt. Or they already have gotten hurt. We just haven't heard about it. And I got a feeling that's the case. Because of this obsession of staying out for free. Getting, which is really telling me that if you don't have the money to go RVing and can't afford anything but free, you probably really should not be RVing and trying to live the freedom and maybe go Get part of the community and get a job and learn a career and get a skill. Just saying. <laughs> uh, and you youngins, I'm sorry <laughs> I say this, is it may be great to be living this wonderful life of uh, freedom and stuff, but I would love to see what your lives look like when you're 40, 50, or 60. Just saying. <laughs> so anyway... <clears throat> I know you want to live for the now. Sounds good. Live for the now. But because I didn't live in the now, and many people I know didn't live in the now, they lived for the future by saving money, getting careers, learning new skills, things like that. Now that they're 50, 60, 70, and they're out on the RV world, they're thriving. Totally thriving. Works good for them. Wonder why? No shortcuts. There's nothing for free. It's going to get you. <laughs> it's going to get you in the end. I'm just saying. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, They'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. And we are back. And, uh... I have to laugh. Now, this show, uh, since we pre-recorded this show, 
this video already came out, which is about a week and a half before you hear this show. But I got it. I don't know why. <laughs> why? And and feel free if anybody else could answer this for me. But this RV odd couple seemed kind of odd. I'm <laughs> just saying. So they're out, they put out a, a video called Pissed, and, and it's because the big channels won't give them the time of day. And then I told you just a few shows ago, I invited and I said, well, I'll tell you what, I felt kind of like, oh, it's not, not all of us are that way. We'll interview you. And they brushed us off because they were lined up for a show to do the RV Show USA, which is a great channel, great radio show. I'm not bashing them at all. I think they're great people. And I think they put a lot of, a lot of work into what they do. There's no doubt. Uh, that's a full-time job right there. And... I'm not willing to do it. <laughs> if I did, uh, I'm sure we'd flourish if we did something like that. But uh, we're more into the life, you know, life, um, RV living and lifestyles. But then they get on there and they're able to uh, talk about their bluebirds on the back of their rig in the first place. And, they, you know, if they had any common sense, I would have just stopped letting the birds making you. It's no doubt that they know the birds was making something you could have stopped them making their nest right away and they would have found a new place and uh they milked that one good and uh they're totally you can tell you can see it in their eyes you can see in that video their video they're all about building up their viewers and making a thriving youtube channel of course i don't blame them but it's too obvious so they they go nuts with the bluebirds. Then they get in the RV thing. And then they also uh, uh, do a show about all these products you should have. And whenever people do, and, and we do them too. We, I've done them before and I still will do them. Um, but it's not my bread and butter. Uh, they'll do product reviews. When you see the top 15 product reviews, let me guess, every one of them is going to have an Amazon link or affiliate link. Why? Because it's extra income for them. Their channel is all about cha-ching. They are classy, <laughs> oh, not so classy, so so in the middle, uh, e-beggars in a sense. They're all about trying to make money on their channel. And uh, you can see it and feel it. And uh, um, it's okay to do that at the same time. Don't be so obvious. And so uh, they're all about the numbers. Every video is all about the numbers. And uh, it, it's just, I can see it so clearly. I don't know if people watch. Just watch what they're doing. Watch their videos. It's all about the numbers. And occasionally I saw actually one video they did. That actually showed a little bit about a trip they did looking at Yosemite. And, and it was like, okay. They finally did something that was more like an RV channel of sharing, not trying to make money. So anyway, uh, uh, and, and of course, uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of them pushing free. Um, I think uh, I think they like the RV-ish hookups kind of thing. So it'd be interesting to see what they do in the future. So uh, getting back to a subject from a video before about um, talking about I called the sheriff one where uh, um, uh, Dan and Jen Nevada uh, called the sheriff because somebody showed up in the middle of the night making noise. And so some of the feedback I got, uh, one was from the, uh, hold on a second, let me, the mobile homestead uh, left me a note and he uh, talks about, he goes uh courtside a lot and he says really for many 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 years courtside was pretty sleepy town even in the winter when everybody showed up very little incidents very little crime but he said uh he mentioned in the last three years or so because of the homeless and because of uh well, at least that's kind of what he was pointing towards um that the rvers are becoming more victims and in, in places like that and there's much more crime issues uh, in courtside than they've ever had before and that's just a good example of how the world is changing and not necessarily for the better 
Um, it only makes sense because if um, I watch a, a show called Invisible People, which has, happens to be a, sh- a channel that devotes themselves to interviewing uh, homeless people and trying to let them tell their stories. And, and it's a very good channel. And uh, what they uh, like, he interviewed a gal just uh, the other day that's in San Francisco, and they talk about how much harassment they get for being homeless. Uh, they, there's certain days they can have a tent. There's certain days they can't. They get into a shelter. Once you're in a shelter, you can be in it for 90 days, and then you boot it out. And then you need to sleep on the streets again. You need to put up a tent, but you get harassed to take down your tent, move your tent, all this stuff. And so they're constantly on the move. So what they're looking for, the cities have some resources that they they need if they need to get food and things like that. But um, ultimately, it's pushing them out of the big cities. That's the big cities' way to cure the problem: is not help homeless, but make homeless uncomfortable so they don't want to be here. So then it pushes them out. And of course, what they start doing is going out to areas or public lands where that they can live and pitch their tents or do whatever they need to do in order to get uh, at least a little bit of uh, pattern to their lives uh, where they're not constantly being harassed, as they put it. And uh, I don't blame them in the sense, if you really think about it. Um, they want to be left alone, but they also want food, they want a community and stuff, but yeah, I understand all that. But it's causing them to go out to the public lands. And so I, I think a lot of some of these issues coming up is because we're not addressing homeless problems, and, and yes, there's so many things that causes it. It could be hardships, it could be money, it could be drugs, it could be mental illness, it could be um, military, PSD, I think they call it, PSTS, or something like that, I didn't say it right, and I apologize, um, that uh, these people got some real stories, and uh, uh, the problem is we're not giving them solutions, what really they need is shelter, they need a home, they need low-income housing, and It's better we pay for that than it is trying to pay for these programs that are not working. So, as a result, it's getting worse and worse and worse. Which, in the result, the long run, it affects the big cities, and now it's starting to affect the outside or the urban part, and then farther out. And it's only going to get worse if we don't address the problem. So, unfortunately. When some of these folks that have special needs, you might say, when it comes to a drug habits or a mental illness or something like that, they're going to have confrontation with folks. And uh, they're not always in control. And uh, one of the comments I got from uh, uh, a boondocker uh, in one of the comments, this is like, if you're on public lands... You don't have the right to go out and tell someone else how to act, even if it's in the middle of the night, or or confront them. You need to be tolerant. And yeah, I, I understand that too. And, and you're giving up that right because you are not in a protected area. So yeah, it, the debate goes on, I guess. But uh, um, interesting comments. They're all right. I mean, every one of them that they've addressed um, are both right. Um, And if you're carrying, one is you don't want to advertise you're carrying, but two, uh, you're taking things to a whole nother level when you are carrying and uh, it could backfire on you. Another comment that came across from Mobile Homestead, which um, he says I missed the mark when it comes to a lot of the homeless issue is that there's a lot of people that, and he's seen this through his experience, um, could be her, <laughs> anyway, that he was a vendor a lot, and he's found and then he's found that a lot of people that have rigs just as good as anybody else, um, and young folks that find it's 
easier uh, the, so they don't have to get jobs and things like that to do the begging. So a lot of, he says, I don't know how many times I've seen people pull up in nice rigs or cars off to the side, then grab an old blanket and hat and clothes and then go beg for money and actually uh, find ways to fund their kind of lifestyle so they don't have to work. And uh, I can't say yes or no if that's the case or not, but I do know that occurs. I don't know how many times there's been stories of people have been begging, um, and this isn't about the e-begging, that's a whole nother level, um, where people are, you know, uh, that's their living. They find it easier to beg for money and try to get people to feel sorry for them and earn money that way than to actually go out and get a job. And, uh, and the new young folks with this entitlement kind of things, and I'm just quoting what he wrote, um, don't want to work for a living. They'd rather get it, fund their lifestyle where people give them money and beg for money or e-beg. And so that's why a lot of these young folks are doing what they're doing, living in these vans and they'll run down you know, little trailers and stuff and living on free land and all that stuff because uh, it's an easier lifestyle. They cho choose the freedom and I don't want to be a corporate kind of person and all that kind of stuff. And so that's why we're seeing more of that. And uh, he was saying in courtside, one of the big problems is those kind of people are showing up there. Uh, there's also a lot of problems with the dogs and stuff. People don't uh, leash their dogs and there's all kinds of issues with that the court sides dropping uh, <laughs> it isn't as pleasant as it used to be let's put it that way and these are just reports I'm passing on so I always urge you people when we make our videos to leave comments and read the comments that are down below there and, and create a discussion I you know once again if it's if it's a trolling kind of comments and stuff I'll get rid of them but both of these, even when someone disagreed with me, cool. And they gave me a really good reason why. And so uh, I could certainly see their side of the story too. I've been pointing out a lot more about homeless issues. And, and don't get me wrong on homeless. I wish we could help all these people. Um, but the way we're doing it is not working. And it's actually causing more problems. And it's bleeding over into the RV lifestyle. That's all I'm saying on that. So uh, yeah, let's change subjects here. We have a crisis. Dogs are dropping all over the nation, affecting large and small dogs of all breeds. Citizens are crying out for good dog waste bags. Dog owners demands have been answered. Ranger Rob poopy bags on rolls and sheets quality materials easy tie handles deeper design lemon scented on rolls and sheets and made with love available at Amazon with free shipping okay now that I got my e-bagging over with <laughs> oh please please I gotta I, I gotta go camping for free somewhere but I still want your money but anyway, so anyway, uh, once again, Ranger Rob Poopy Bags is our sponsor, kind of, sort of, because it's part of our company. Uh, makes sense when we have radio stations. Remember, RV Talk Radio is much more than just a podcast. It's a radio show for Good Talk Radio, along with our other shows. We have Arizona Talk Radio, Paradigm Chimes. We do We Want Real News a little bit more on the conservative side, which is uh, part of that channel. So, uh, and we also have Ranger Rob Rednecks Rule the World, which is a kind of a radio show we do, along with tons of other syndications all over the world on Good Talk Radio. So, I guess I'm plugging Good Talk Radio. Um, so, you can l listen to other episodes of RV Talk Radio, along with all, some of our other shows, along with dozens of other shows from all over the world. Uh, there's, we have Joe Messina, we have Sons of Liberty, we have Steve Sanchez, we have oh, all kinds of really good uh, shows, talk shows. Uh, we have uh, Let's Talk Nutrition, we have a great Sunday program in the morning, um, 
praise the Lord and also uh, uh, voice of the Lord uh, minister. Uh, he's a uh, Billy. He does a really good job. So we have a good Sunday program uh, along with all kinds of other programs, smooth jazz. And uh, so that's, that's radio station is stuffed, just stuffed with stuff. <laughs> so check them out. Good Talk Radio. Just go to goodtalkradio.com. You can pull up Good Talk Radio on iTunes and tune in. Uh, it's on Spreaker. It's on uh, iHeartRadio. Oh, my gosh. It's all over the place. So, anyway, check it out. Good Talk Radio and RV Talk Radio, all part of the big picture. And Ranger Rob Poopy Bags is part of the sponsorship of that that helps kind of pay for all that stuff, along with the fun. You know, we fund it ourselves. So, it really does help. So anyway, um, let's move on to our next subject. Well, I kind of got the thinking here in a little bit, and I thought I'd take this module and ask you guys a few questions. And and please leave comments in the uh, below, and uh, or just send us an email at rob at RV Talk Radio. Anyway, uh, what I'm curious about is like you boondockers and RVers too is you know I, I you know I I'm into prepping and because I don't know if you guys know it but if you kind of I'm sure you do uh, you can't watch the news anymore and there's so many weird things going on worldwide and uh, you know I wouldn't be surprised if for some reason certain areas maybe lose their grid for a while and something like that but so I know you guys say well I I got solar and I got, you know, a little bit of water. But the thing is, is even after a week or two, you guys are used to running into town, grabbing more water. Uh, and of course, it depends where you're at. And if you're in a desert scenario, water is harder to come by. If you're up no northwest, uh, plenty of rivers and stuff like that. But could you last for a while if the grid went down? And if you did, um, are you dependent on your solar, your generator, your propane, and water? Because if you had to start getting water from a river and stuff like that, you know you need to filter it. Are you or have you been thinking about gritting down a little more for emergencies? Not to mention a weapon, not so much for protection, but... What if you can't go to the grocery store anymore? What if you can't, and you guys can't carry as much food as, say, I have prep. I have a prepping room, and I prep not only for my, me and Sherry, but I have kids down here too. That you know, the more I preach to them, the saying, you know, you should have a little bit, at least a week's worth of water and some food. Uh, you know, they're they're in the new times. Uh, electricity will never go away, and Life's perfect, and uh, and I hope it stays that way. I, I, I'm i not doom and gloom, but I'm also thinking you should be prepared. There's nothing worse than being caught off guard. So do you, or how are you thinking about, or at least maybe in this conversation, am I making you think about, do you have a weapon? Not so much for protection, which would be needed in a situation like that, but you might need it for hunting. You know, take out a little rabbit or something. Um, boy, you may you may cringe at that now, but you may later go on, yeah, a good rabbit dinner would be good. Uh, do you keep extra food or dried food? Maybe, uh, you know, from Amazon you can get those buckets of one week's worth of dried food. And I always kept one in our RV, and uh, um, they don't take up much room. And, of course, the, the magic is water. Now, my advantage having a base is I can store a lot of water. And I have a pool. And with a pool, is like a reservoir. Now, if we had a water shortage or something like that, I could easily, uh, with a good filter, I mean a really good one, literally take water out of my pool and run it through a filter system and stir it into water buckets. And uh, I actually have a, it's actually for prepping, that's actually quite the uh, water supply. And you have to do it kind of quickly because it'll break down, you know, uh, over time because um, 
it's hot down here, so you would have to start processing your water very quickly if you knew you were in a grid down situation. But in an RV, you know, you think RVs have some advantages, they, uh, especially electric wise, you, you can produce power. However, you can't produce water. Um, do you have a way to capture water? If it, you know, like down here in Arizona, you get the monsoons, tons of water come down at one time. If you could capture some of that, it'd be amazing how much water you could get. But you would have to filter it. Um, or if you're up in the places where there are some rivers and stuff like that, uh, you, you want to filter that water. Could you do it? And uh, I did a review the other day on a portable uh, solar charger, which I thought was awesome. And uh, if you go to our channel, go back a couple weeks, you'll see I did a review on a uh, four panel uh, solar charger, portable solar charger. Uh, that thing was awesome. And I've actually bought one of my own, so I got two of them. What a cool, cool thing for keeping up your uh, little things charged up, like cameras and cell phones and little things like that, batteries. So uh, anyway, I'd be curious to hear your comments about how do you prep or do you even prep at all? Do you even care? Maybe you don't. I mean, a lot of you guys live for the now. <laughs> so maybe you're just like, ah, I don't want to think about that, Rob. Or do you? So uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. And please leave comments below. Do you prep? How do you prep? And how? what would you do in the particular area that you're at right now, let's say, um, as opposed to maybe you go down south in the winter, what would you do for water and can you filter it? And some, some rigs... RVs have built-in uh, filter systems, but uh, those, uh, do you have extra filters? That would be my next thing. So, And, of course, you have a generator. All that stuff takes fuel. And the big thing I was thinking about is, so you're out in the boonies and the grid goes down and stuff, but you want to move to another location. Pretty soon it's not you're rationing your gas because you won't be able to get any more without siphoning. Do you even have siphon hoses? Uh, you may have to siphon from rigs that are not running anymore or, or gas stations may not be able to pump fuel. Would you be in a heap of trouble? Do you carry extra fuel with you? Just curious. Anyway, I'd love to hear your feedback. Well, I guess I should respond to another comment I got on a, a show we did, uh, uh, episode 121, 22. Um, the ones about the sheriff. Anyway, so I got labeled as a Debbie Downer, which I've actually given myself that label once in a while. Uh, this came from uh, Roland Johnson. And uh, once, first of all, love loved the extra comments. Pro, uh, I told you, pro or con, we love feedback as long as it's professional and his seem pretty, pretty decent. He was kind of pointing out that, you know, he's met a lot of the people that are e-beggars and they're super nice people and i agree on this show we make it a point to try to point out the positive things towards you know either at the end of whatever we're talking about we've said that there's a lot of situations where people are uh, uh boondocking and they're on limited income and that's probably one of the best choices for them where they could live a full life keep their expenses down and, and live off fixed income based on um, disabilities and things like that and uh, uh, same with uh, the different kinds of traveling our biggest thing is we try to bring out the different things to think about and then of course there's other channels out there they're always talking about the fluff put the two together and then base your the decisions of what you're going to do in the future um, based off of whether you want to sell your house or not sell your house or try to do this at a young age and make a living on the road. Um, we just want to give you food for thought. And so if it sounds like we're a Debbie Downer because, um, you know, you got the other shows are all fluff. They're all talking about the fun and, it's, and appeal and stuff. And then so many people we've met uh, have gone out there and then like months later or just sold their rig and said, this is ridiculous. Uh, they weren't as happy as they thought they were going to be. The life was all about RVing and trying to fix it. They couldn't get their job done, couldn't find good internet. 
And so that's why we always bring out this stuff to consider before they make their decision. We always, always, always will suggest try to do it some trials first before you make the investment in big decisions that come out and do this kind of lifestyle. Um, and uh, young adults, you know, we just try to bring out the, we can't help because of its age, I think, where you tend to be a little fatherly or tend to be a little bit um, more cautious to, uh, to bring that stuff out. Everybody needs mentors, good good mentors and, and negative uh, mentors. And, uh, uh, and take that information and obviously make your own decision. Be accountable for yourself. To be accountable for yourself, you surround yourself with information, good, bad, or indifferent, to make your own decision. And so I don't want to be, I mean, I could. Eat, I know when we're on the road, I mean, we're just doing fluff, fluff videos, which we, they're fun to do, of, you know, uh, RV this, RV that, how to change a flat tire, how to winterize. We did all that, and we still do, and we continue, or find good products we like. And yes, we will. Uh, he mentioned in there, well, Rob, you, you endorse products too. And he's like, absolutely. Um, uh, when we find something we really like, we will put an Amazon link on there. We're not dependent on the income, but we do appreciate it because, you know, uh, we support all of our radio. You know, we told earlier in the show that all of our stuff is also syndicated on the big radio station. And, uh, uh, of course, we got the Ranger Raw Poopy Bags, which is a product that goes beyond, and it's not just for this channel. It goes well, well beyond um, uh, the RV industry. It's for pets. It's for dogs. Dogs are across the board. So um, you got to realize we have like uh, 11 YouTube channels. We have about 25 Twitter accounts. We have probably 35 groups. We have at least 11 or 12 different Facebook pages for different things we do, not just RV. And so uh, um, we have things on cooking. We have things on prepping. We have uh, shows for Paradigm Chimes and Arizona Talk Radio. and They're all um, separated, and sometimes you'll see them cross depending on the subject matter. Um, it's fun to do. We enjoy it, and that's what we do. And so uh, the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags are on all those channels because everybody has dogs and all these other things we do. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, I'm not against it. I'm also I'm just afraid of people getting out and finding the world to be saturated with this stuff, and their expectations will be. Uh, uh, their candle will be blown out. You might say they get out here and realize that. When you get too many people doing a, a certain thing, it's it's hard. It's just as as harder to get a YouTube channel monetized because they've changed the rules. Uh, some of us that were grandfathered in, it was a piece of cake. I mean, before you just started a channel and you almost instantly monetized. Now you got to have ten thousand views and uh, over a thousand subscribers, and you have to have so many views per month, and it's uh it's a lot harder. Can be done, it, obviously. Um, and uh, when you have a niche product and when you're just focused on one thing, your YouTube channel usually explodes and it will do really well. So, uh, yeah, um, don't want to get a bum rap on that um, as far as, but yes, we probably do sound like a Debbie Downer, but we also do it out of concern. And I do appreciate the feedback and uh, I do hope that you notice in all of our shows that we do bring out the opposite of what we're talking about towards the end of each segment saying where it fits in and where it's practical. So uh, I do appreciate that feedback from uh, um, Roland Johnson. And please, I, I urge you to continue giving comments of uh, uh, as long as they're professional like you did. That's wonderful. And so uh, we'll pass that on. And uh uh, explain ourselves a little bit. Uh, we do focus just on RV living and lifestyles. Uh, don't talk about products as much on this particular show. And uh, when we get back on the road and, and, and traveling again, which actually we'll be doing some stuff very soon, we'll be doing the fluff too. So <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> uh, we just want folks to come out and get a real picture of what's going on. I think the two biggest thing is 
uh, the income, having something uh, set in stone and having skills and ed uh, education will get you a long ways and, and work camping and stuff like that. Um, the other is safety. Um, that's changing and we, uh, we're concerned. Uh, doesn't mean, and we're not telling you, we're not telling you to stop. We're telling you to be cautious and think about what's going on. Maybe uh, do more things in caravans and stuff like that. Work as groups, uh, like the folks that I was, uh, uh, his and her Alaska, I mean, they would go down to Baja. They do it with other folks because there's always safety in numbers. So, yeah, um, thank you. I do appreciate the feedback. Continue it. And uh, if, if it's always going to be <laughs> uh, against the show, that's fine, too, as long as we're getting really good feedback and we'll try to address it. So thank you, um, uh, Roland, and uh, keep the comments coming. And um, before I forget, I, I did want to bring out this. I actually have a friend that is in an RV park right now in a beautiful fifth wheel that actually wants the opposite of what we've been talking about in the show. They actually are trying to find a way to get out of their fifth wheel and get back to a normal lifestyle. And their folks, their ages are close to ours. And... Uh, Life dealt them the situation of being in a fifth wheel. They're not regretting it that much and stuff. But now it's been two or three years now, and all they can think about is how do I get out of this kind of stuff? So there is that scenario that I want to bring out that um, there may come a time that you may say, okay, this has been fun. I've, we've done this for a few years. Can you get out? And so uh, I guess you've probably heard some not very many channels talk about your escape plan. Um, when you think you might get tired of it, or maybe your health isn't uh, the way it is, and maybe you just want to be more uh, settled down in one place and hang out with the grandkids and stuff, do you have an exit pl program, um, program or plan? Um, and uh, that could be a problem because uh, you buy a new RV, it could be underwater. Um, gosh, it, it could really, um, the numbers may not work. And maybe your income changed or your, uh, some people, you know, live in their RVs and stuff and still work nine to five and, um, and then that changes or something. And um, yeah, so I, I find that concerning. So keep that in mind is, uh, once again, I know it sounds like Debbie Downer, <laughs> sorry, but at the same time, what is your exit plan? Do you have one? And I'd love to hear feedback, uh, in the comments. What, what, what do you have for an exit plan? I know you never want to think about that, but you never want to think about getting old or, or retiring and, you know, or health problems. You don't want to think about that stuff, but if you don't, you could be surprised and caught off guard. Okay now guys, I want to devote this last part of the show to Nomadic Fanatic. <laughs> yes, he just did a, a video which is actually amazing. Um, I actually commend him for what he did. He uh, And I put a link in the description to the video I'm talking about. And uh, you have to remember, some of our shows we do, I do prior, almost a week ahead of time sometimes. So this, by the time you hear this show, um, uh, this will be kind of an older video. So anyway, the link's here, and it's about Evergreen College. And uh, uh, and I, I've actually watched uh, um, Nomadic Fanatic for, for years now, off and on. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, he... Uh, he went to sc school to finish his uh, school, got his bachelor's degree at, at Evergreen College in Washington State, which, anyway, <laughs> what I really got a kick out of, and uh, he did pretty good at staying neutral, um, is the liberal things he had to deal with. And uh, one of the biggest points, two couple of things I got out of that, is one is the... Uh, you know, he came from Grays Harbor College, which is, you know, you get normal grades and you try to get your GPA up and you earn your stuff. You're, you don't, nothing's given to you. It's not a pass fail thing. And it gets to evergreen and it's just the opposite. It's group thinking and kumbaya and all this stuff. 
And one of the things he noticed was, and this brings me back to a lot of things I'm talking about in this show. One is he grew up, even at his his much younger age than me, um, uh, with accountability. (laughs) And that's uh, one thing I think is a key word that I've been using one should be using more in some of the shows I'm watching is accountability. Um, and, uh, the other thing, you know, they're talking about how in his classrooms, they'd start the day out of like, what gender are you today? (laughs) I'm male, I'm female. I don't know today, whatever. And it was like, his reality was what the hell are they teaching in our colleges? It's like, the real world is not like that. You don't come into work and declare yourself as such and such, or uh, I didn't show up for class today because I was in a protest and and kumbaya and all that stuff. And uh, that's my fear. <laughs> that's exactly my fear. And uh, there's evidence. I mean, there's a person who actually did a very, very good video talking about liberalism of how insane it's getting. Now, I am not against, um, well, on a personal level, I have my beliefs. I don't want to know about yours. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're um, cross-gender and stuff. Just don't bring it up in a conversation, you know. I don't walk up and say, hi, everybody. By the way, my hemorrhoids are really going at it today. Too much info. <laughs> and no, I don't have it. I'm just saying. Um, do you know what I'm saying here is, is it's okay to have your personal preferences or your what you exercise for your sexual stuff and all that stuff personally. I don't need to know that and nor do most of us really want to know as an individual. If you're a nice person and hardworking and stuff like that, <clears throat> that's all I need to know. <laughs> I can work side by side with anybody, but when they start telling me things I don't really want to know about and don't need to know about and really Keep it to yourself. I don't walk up to every person and shake their hand and say, oh, and by the way, I'm straight and been married to a woman for 39 years. And nor am I, <laughs> and most of you don't care unless, unless you're friends or something. But uh, uh, I don't know. It's insane. And, and that's, I guess, this... Uh, lifestyle that's coming out of the colleges and stuff like that um, I could certainly see why there's a lot of nomads out there because they certainly couldn't function in the real world <laughs> like that no way so is that what's bringing on so much of this don't want to be part of the corporate scene I want my freedom I want to have you pay for my travel <laughs> Uh, I don't want to be accountable. Is that what's going on out there? Accountability is not being taught anymore. And this craziness of uh, what is my gender today and stuff like that, which once again, I don't care and I don't want to know. And I don't care what you say. I'm going to either say him, her, or she. And that's how it is it's just i cannot scientifically fight figure out anything different about male or female i just know those are the two scientific things out there and if i slip up and you have some weird pronoun or something just let it go because you're certainly not going to get away with it in the corporate world you can try but you're going to be stressed out a lot. I can tell you that. One thing it was mentioned about Evergreen is it felt like being on eggshells every day. What a hell of a place to be. It's supposed to be a school of education. 
You know, that's it. Not protesting, not having a, a 10 minute starting every class of like figuring out what everybody's pronouns are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's insane. We cannot function like that in the future. It's, I can't, we need tolerance. <laughs> Just is, and that's what I'm declaring here is I'm tolerant, but don't make me believe something that's not true or scientifically proven. And, uh, uh, I'd be like walking up to someone and say, Hey, I'm Rob. How are you? And I'm Christian and I believe in God. Well, you don't need to know that unless we are in an event where we're all talking about our religions or something. It, do you get what I'm talking about? Keep it to yourself. And I really think our schools are creating little monsters. <laughs> Society cannot function like that. I know I can't. I think I'm on the wrong radio show. I should be on Paradigm Chimes. But anyway, but I can see how it's bleeding into our young adults, and why the lifestyle, the nomadic thing, and and no structure, no accountability, is being taught in some cases. Now, all the colleges are not like that, by the way. Um, but uh, I do recommend that there's a really good pro podcast out there that teaches you about what's going on in the schools and the universities called The Freedom Project, called The Dr. Duke Show. I'll say it again. It's called The Dr. Duke Show. <laughs> Please go listen to their podcast. What an awesome podcast. But I'll warn you right now, you'll be mad and frustrated and dumbfounded <laughs> after you listen to each show you go i this can't be real oh yeah it's real so uh i just i want to i mean i i know i i nomadic fanatics gone through growing pains he was probably one of the first eggers out there really bad at it well good at it but bad of doing it a lot and uh you know, he was one of the first ones to say, my transmission went out type thing, and please send me money and all that stuff. But he's kind of matured from that a little bit um, and has kept his channel pretty focused and clear without all the annoying, I'm selling stickers and all that. Occasionally he does it, but you can see if you ever went back to his old, I don't know how far back he can go in his videos anymore, but uh, you can see a maturity happen a little <laughs> in that and uh so that's good and uh and he's probably finding it less stressful and less heat and less nasty comments and well, i'm sure he's still got his normal haters and stuff but um uh the way he did that video very tasteful um and described it well and uh actually maybe gave me a step up of thinking maybe he's a little bit more grounded than I thought. That's saying a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I, I, you ever been speechless? <laughs> That's one of them. And I do recommend the link of his video is in my description. And please go, go, go listen to it. You be, uh, just shaking your head and you and you gotta admire how well he did the presentation and it needs to be done you need to know what's going on in there in the schools and it really needs to be stopped they just need to get back to education just education go to school learn what you need to learn and go do your go live your life and put some shoes on and you'll understand what i'm talking about um <laughs> yeah so <laughs> Let's move on. I would like to say uh, thank you very much for listening to the show. And I appreciate the really, really good comments we've been getting. Um, 
lot of you guys are saying we're kind of nailing it as far as kind of reality and consideration. Um, I, uh, I, I, I just once again want to make it clear that we love RVing, and no, we're not Debbie Downers. We just want to make sure that everybody's stories and situations are different. So if we happen to touch on an area that you're concerned about um, that could be a problem that you may not have thought of, we hope that this show is one of them that makes you think about that and maybe still go the direction you want to go into the RV world, but maybe change the course a little bit to make it work. Um, one is getting into it, being financially set. And then the other thing we talked about in the show is having an exit plan strategy in case uh, it's time to move on. Uh, it's so different for everybody's age group, whether they're married or single um, or uh, uh, set income, things like that. And that's kind of what we talk about here. And uh, uh, I don't know how many notes we get that's saying, yeah, you're, you're right on. And, and we appreciate Rob's honesty. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and our show changes course. So some people will judge us on just one show. And in the next show, like some people say, well, Rob's against nomads and, and homeschooling. You'll see we did a show that's totally pro homeschooling. <laughs> and so you can't judge one show. We just kind of try to focus on particular, you know, certain subjects on each show. And it may not be a subject that you are interested in or agree with. But the next show you might. And uh, we're flexible and uh, uh, we are tolerant. So we do um, take the pros and cons of each situation. And we do try to look at the positive side towards the end. If we're taking a, a con uh, against a particular subject, we'll try to find the pro things as we go through them. So anyway, I want to thank you all very much for listening to uh, RV Talk Radio. Uh, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, we are in Spreaker now, so uh, you'll notice we actually uh, post a lot of our Spreaker links. Uh, that's a great place to um, listen to our podcast, and you can follow that. You can create a free account if you want to. Otherwise, you can find us on YouTube, and of course, we have the podcasts, and we're in all kinds of different uh, platforms. So anyway, thanks again, guys, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye now. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.